I remember going to bed and I lay down. I wake up in the middle of the night and this never happened in my whole life. I remember right before I went to sleep, there was like light shining in the, the curtains that I could not make go away. The curtains weren't good enough to like block out all the light. So street lamp was coming in. So I like I, I, I was there's so much light in the room. I finally fall asleep. I wake up and I'm in like complete pitch blackness, just complete darkness. And to the point where I'm waving my hand in front of my head and I can't see it. So I'm going, all right. I had to have fallen asleep in a safe place, but I can't remember, like woke up with no memory. So as I am laying back down, I go, you know, I'm in a bed. I can feel the bed under me. So I'm just going to lay, lay down and go back to sleep. I, I have to be in a safe spot. And as I turn, I see uh, an apparition of a woman standing above me, looking down at me. It seems she's got blonde hair and I can tell because it looks like there's a light coming from above her and shining onto her shoulders and the hair. So it was either red hair or, or blonde hair. And I can see that, and there's just nothing in the middle. It's just complete blackness in, in the middle of her face and body. And it didn't seem threatening at all. And I thought it was part of a dream. And so I just kind of like fell into sleep and went, I don't think so. And I went to bed. <laughs> Next day, I wake up and I go to the makeup trailer to go to work which is at the hotel. And Chris Pine is in the makeup trailer because he's playing my brother. And Chris Pine is telling a story to the makeup lady. And she's, he's going, um, last night I saw a fucking ghost. Now, I'm go now I've just walked into the room and I'm going, I, I should listen to this uh, and not say anything until I hear what he says. And he goes, last night I'm reading a book and I fell asleep when it was still light out. And so when I woke up, there was no light in the room, but I saw in the corner that there was a crouching woman and she was like, she had no face, but I could just tell that she had this blonde or red hair and I could see the outline of her shoulders. And she got up and started walking toward me and I turned the light on and threw the book in the corner and it was gone. And I said, dude. I know you're not going to believe me, but I saw the exact same thing last night in my room when I was going, I, was, I wouldn't have even told you because I thought it was part of a dream that I had, but she was standing over me. He's like, what? And then we realized like our rooms were separated by a wall. We had two hotel rooms right next to each other. I didn't even know that beforehand, but we were, really, we were like, oh my God. So now we saw the same ghost. So it's been like corroborated. Yeah. <laughs> So now me and him, we're like, well, we got to go find out if this hotel is haunted. So we go walking around the hotel and asking people. And it turns out it's so haunted. Like all of the people at the hotel see ghosts. One guy was like, oh, yeah, I see. Uh, I just see legs walking around the kitchen all the time. Just legs. <laughs> just the bottom half. But they're there about once a week. I'm going, what the <laughs> fuck? And then it's one other guy we asks. He goes, Oh, yeah. Very, very bad spirits here, man. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, this is really surreal. Um, and none of the producers ever believed us. And, um, and then the craziest, the craziest thing happens. And I'm, I'm going into the room, my, my room, and now I know that there's a ghost there. So I'm like, well, I'll talk to it. I'll make it feel comfortable. You know, I'll like walk in and say hi and you know, light a candle. And so I lit some incense and put it in one of those incense holders and had it over there and uh, left the room for two seconds and I come back and the incense holder is right where I left it. And you know how it's held in by gravity? Right. It had been popped out and it's burning a hole in the carpet, but just the incense. And I'm like, how, how, oh no. Like, and so I'm stepping on this thing going, don't burn the place down, man. Like it's, <laughs> we'll be out of here soon. And eventually that later that day, I have to go to the bathroom. And so I, I'm, you know, sitting on the bowl and uh and i i reach for some toilet paper and i'm not kidding dude i'm not kidding this is the scariest moment of my entire life i reach for toilet paper and i pull it and i hear the toilet paper roll i'm going oh no <laughs> oh no and i'm just i'm not looking at it i'm going no 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 if i turn around and the toilet roll is doing that i'm gonna fucking explode and the toilet paper roll sounds like it's spinning 
like this, like over and over and over again. And I'm talking like 30 fucking seconds. So I'm, I slowly am looking at, over at it. <laughs> and it is. The whole roll is just going. And I'm going, no! <laughs> this is the Ghostbusters moment. The whole, the whole roll ended up on the floor, like a new roll. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Did you ever like try to look up if like any woman or yeah. anything had passed away there or um the pla- or- I, I never found anything like that, but the place was called like the villas at Santa Fe. It was outside of Santa Fe, this this place. And it's online as one of like the the more haunted spots in New Mexico. So just turned out, you know, the old built on a burial ground, Indian burial ground type thing. So whatever was built there, maybe something happened in the past or. Like... Yeah. How crazy is that shit? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my, that's my ghost story for him. Mm. Yeah, I think I've we all been, have ghost we've stories. We've had some weird experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been to the most haunted house in Florida. The guy, they set his truck out on, uh, on fire. He ran out and they shot him in the driveway and they never really figured out what happened. Whoa. And, um, the family that moved in, um, the kid, he would watch the kid at night until the mom said, you know, you're freaking him out. Could you please stop? Uh, the boat got moved. Stuff would be getting moved around in the house and all that. Um, and then after they moved out, a woman dreamed of the house. And uh, I've been there because my dad uh, worked with the woman uh, doing wallpaper and worked in the house. And I was in the house. Like I thought I didn't see the ghost, unfortunately, but I like heard it. And I like, I knew I wasn't alone up in that attic. Like I knew he was there with me, Ooh. but the build out is really cool because the attic has like these really cool staircase that goes down to the kitchen out the screen door. Mm. And um, the woman who moved in before Donna um, had a dream of that house. And the realtor was saying, Oh, this is interesting. If you go down here, she's like, the kitchen, the street. And she's like, yeah, I dreamed of this house. <laughs> and they ended up moving out. And um, Donna wasn't on Unsolved Mysteries, but they mentioned her name, how she moved in. And my dad, uh, like, heard footsteps and stuff when he was in the house. Uh, there was a time where uh, the windows were open. I mean, they were, like, locked open. Like, nothing. They wouldn't just fall down. Like you said, how the hold by gravity. They're not just, like, how the hell did that right. fall down? Um, he would move her keys, and it was gonna. It was raining, and she went to hur- hurry home. All the windows were shut and locked. <laughs> yeah. The ghost isn't there anymore. They did like some seance thing or so, or I don't know, but the ghost is gone. But yeah, wow, yeah I've lived in so several funny. houses that have at least some experience in it. And then I've had one workplace that had stuff happen. I used to work at a pizza place and I was management. So I'd have to make us close by ourselves. And I didn't really like being there alone. So I kind of have PTSD about that stuff. Well, I think the ghost figured it out that had this like saloon doors that separated like the kitchen from the dining room. And then the office was back in the kitchen. Everybody be gone. And I'd hear the saloon doors open and shut. I'm like, hell, <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's like, that's what it's time to leave. I don't. Yeah. When you're, it. when you're at work alone, and it's the yeah. end of the night and you hear something like that. I mean, that's, that's shit your pants time. Yeah. <laughs> especially <laughs> not knowing. Cause I'm, I had like a real person like come into my workplace. Well, I won't get too into the details cause I've talked about it before, but came into the work while the store was closed. And that's kind of what gave me the PTSD. So I'm never know. Is this real? Or is this a ghost? Is this real? So I was like, always on edge at night. I was like, yeah, I don't like this. Oof. Yeah. yeah, I worked overnight at um, a Flying J uh, gas station pilot. I don't know if you heard those. They're all over. Oh, yeah, totally. Pilot, no, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a cross-country traveler. So then you I've know Flying many J. a Flying J. Yeah. <laughs> many so a pilot. There was a truck driver that was found one time dead in his truck there. And after that happened, um, one overnight I was working um, with a co-worker Susan before I became like one of the managers. And she left. And she came out. And she was like freaked out. She's like, you're not going to believe what just happened. I'm sitting in the office. The printer came on and printed out a sheet of paper. And up in the corner, it was like centered weird. Like, I know she didn't do this herself. I mean, she's not like a prank. I mean, like we joke around stuff, but there's no way she would have thought of this. She goes, what does that say in that corner? And it said help on the piece of paper that just like printed out. (laughs) We're like, she's like, okay, this is really some fucked up shit going on. That's awesome. (laughs) That's scary. 
Yeah, nice. I think my favorite story is actually has to do with my grandparents, but my grandma had passed away. And then like several years later, my grandpa had passed away and we were all cleaning out the house. And me and my cousin was going through my grandma's jewelry because my grandpa didn't want to get rid of my grandma's stuff yet. So when he passed, we were separating stuff we wanted. Hmm. We was going through the jewelry and my cousin came across this piece of jewelry. I forget what it was. I think it was a necklace or earrings or something. She had clip earrings. So my cousin's like, oh, I like these, but I wish it was... Um, another piece of jewelry i forget what she wanted now it's been a few years and we looked all through the jewelry box for a matching piece because sometimes grandma had that looked all through it and i was uh helping my aunt like clear out the whole house my cousin was only there for like a day or two so my cousin went so i went to go help my aunt like the next day because we looked all everything and like everything i was keeping i was keeping in this separate room and was getting rid of the other stuff and I went into the room that I was keeping my stuff in, and there was a dresser in there. Sure enough, that piece of jewelry my cousin was looking for was just sat on the dresser that <laughs> we looked weird. everywhere, could not find. <laughs> that's like that's like sixth sense. Yeah. yeah, it's like you know the the ghost keeps moving the butterfly hair clip or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my grandma said she used shit. to see my great grandpa and. In there, in that house too. After he passed, but I don't know. <laughs> and I actually, mean, I I yeah. gotta say the the biggest thing that it taught me was like, hey, ghosts are real, dude. Like you don't have to believe in them. Right, <laughs> they're yeah. there. Yeah, that don't exists. make themselves known if they want to make themselves known. Yeah, you definitely have that moment where you're like, I have to yeah. include this into my understanding of the universe now that I've seen it. 